as it gets, folks. A grumpy Grinch plots to ruin Christmas for the village of... What are we doing? What in the hell are we doing? We're looking at remake of a remake, number 400,008. I guess I should talk about my experience with Dr. Seuss movies. I actually liked Horton. I saw Cat in the Hat. I'm probably the only person you're ever gonna know who can tolerate that movie. I actually really liked its energy. And the Jim Carrey Grinch is a piece of shit. It looks ugly, Jim Carrey's annoying as fuck, and just totally shits on the entire story. What was it, 67 with Boris Karloff? Beautifully animated, so colorful and vibrant. It gives me chills even when I think about it, just that ending. I didn't see the Lorax, but I've heard enough things that I know it'll make my blood boil. Now we get to this one. I honestly would rather have seen The Cat in the Hat Meets the Grinch. Going into this, I was gonna get something that at least was gonna be colorful. The problem is, starts with our sweetheart, Benedict Cumberbatch. This is a person who has a great voice. One of those great British voices of our time. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make him go to his quote unquote Steve impression, just the whitest of white voices you've ever heard. Why would I want to listen to Doctor Strange be the Grinch? What the fuck? Problem is, this is the grounding up of everything that is wrong with this movie. It is emotionless, absolutely lifeless. Every single thing is half-assed. From the animation, from the character designs, to the voice acting, to the emotions, to the score, to the directing, it is all fucking lifeless. The Grinch is one of those characters you sort of kind of like to hate. There's a time and place for it, you know? In The Grinch it sort of works, whereas someone like Negan in The Walking Dead is not in an environment where that seems welcoming. When you make them too likable at a certain point, moments where they need to be likable, where the antagonist is the protagonist, and The Grinch is one of those completely bitter motherfuckers. To put this voice, you're putting this voice into here, does not sound angry, never sounds completely upset, and he's not even animated that crazily. When you watch the Chuck Jones one, and you see that giant smile that goes up in him, it's like, it, he could give a Joker the round of his money. They don't do anything to even match those facial expressions. Now, if people are telling you, oh, you should go check it out, you know, it's, uh, it's doing something different, you know, like it's actually focusing on other things that the original ones didn't do. If anyone's telling you that, it's full of bullshit because I think that's what's kind of expected, like at least sufficient of filmmaking nowadays. There is a little bit more focus on Cindy Lou as well as the Jim Carrey one. They give sort of a different motivation. She's sort of finding out how to get Santa to come and she can tell him of this personal wish. I would have been totally okay with that. She is so bland in this. These Who's are pretty ugly looking. They look literally like warts, just toes that are warts. And there's no room for, you know, these big facial expressions at all. And you're not even looking forward to it. You're not really anticipating much with these designs. What I would have liked is have them somewhat modeled after Joy from Inside Out. That would have been just Gorgeous. Everything is kind of flipped backwards. The Grinch who isn't as bitter, isn't as cruel. You kind of figure with in the Chuck Jones one, he doesn't really socialize with who's, he's not in contact with them. So that kind of brought on that he has a little bit of a sinister edge. He just sounds so enraged and it sounds quiet. This is a Victorian Grinch who's just completely full of whiskey. This guy sounds like the nerd who hooks up your TV and tries to make you laugh on an impression. And I was wondering, okay, they're actually gonna go this route. So the Grinch is like a citizen and people like know who it is. When it starts to kind of fall apart is when they start focusing on Cindy Lou. And I knew they were not gonna get it right when they 
show you how the Grinch lives, where he lives. How does he afford to get all this stuff? And the animation is so clean, he looks just as well kept as everybody else. No, the Grinch looks like he uses a tub of conditioner a day. The big problem, we are now afraid of scaring kids. We were able to handle Karloff's Grinch where he could almost scare a few kids. And there was a little bit of this edge to him. Those images are just, for lack of a better word, graphic. And now he has like the big eyes, he's more expressive, he shows a lot more sympathy. So there's not a lot to really dislike about him, you know, in a loving way. And the problem is, the only part I sort of laughed where he was a jerk was when he threw the snowball at the kid and collapsed him. I thought that was great. Every single thing, it's like, it just fits into the rude category. It's like, oh no, he is rude. And I find the animation, while it's not bad, there's something about it that could have been a little more colorful. The designs of the houses aren't that spectacular. They look more like gingerbread houses. When we swoop around it and you're supposed to see the majesty, I'm like, what, what, what did they do in Coco that they didn't do here? And I think there's a little bit to say about depth, a little bit more of complexities. Everything felt more tangible in Coco. In this one, it looks a little CD-ROM-ish. And yeah, there's so many jokes that don't work. We're in a decade where we are getting stuff like Toy Story 3, we're getting Lego Movie, we're getting Incredibles 2, where audiences are howling at kids' movies. In this one, they so set it up by mood, and the way people move in this universe, the way they talk, the way they're voiced. I am expecting constant joke left and right. I'm expecting a certain kind of dryness in humor. Though this is supposed to be a pretty bad movie, Angry Birds, whether it was funny or not, it seemed to have matched that type of animation to the type of humor. I saw it uh, by myself and there were like, a, I don't know, two dozen people in the theater. They probably laughed five times, I laughed twice. And what I was doing was I was going, you know, how can this person be a little funnier? The Grinch should have been animated like the Looney Tunes. Bugs Bunny's really scared face in, you know, the classic cartoons. I want this character to have that expression in certain moments. And sometimes they do the little orchestra where they're kind of creeping around and it doesn't work at all. There's no timing, there's no sense of facial expressions. There is this really fat deer. I knew immediately they get it wrong when you find out it's a fat reindeer. And you know what would have been hilarious? Okay, so here's what actually happens in the movie. The three of them, the dog, the Grinch, and the deer are going to sleep, but they only have one bed. So they're going, oh, can we sleep in your bed? Oh. And then he's like, oh, no, no, no. And then he's like, okay, just this one time. So the two of them get in the bed, you know, the Grinch and the dog. And then the deer, since he's so huge, plops onto the bed and almost squashes them. And this is a great setup. What you could do here, he is this really bitter individual. It's a dog that he kind of belittles all the time. You have this obnoxious reindeer, all huddled next to him in this really claustrophobic way. That is perfect. What you should have done here, you should have, I imagine like sort of a corner, make the Grinch literally physically suffocate. It needs to feel real. That pain needs to feel real that he's sort of, you know, going up trying to get on top of the deer, but the deer is so heavy. The Grinch has to stay awake, breathe super heavily with these giant eyes. And then you have this other guy who is claiming that the Grinch is his best friend. He's that super optimistic, Christmas loving man. They do absolutely nothing. You could have had the Grinch do something super awful to this man and he doesn't react. He just sees the flip side of it. He just goes, oh, that's great. He needs to keep that genuine super smile. It's like you're setting up these characters you know, you're doing nothing with it. And they're sort of hinting that the mother of Cindy Lou has this thing with being really fast at throwing, you know, breakfast. And there's no point, again, they're just sort of trying to get these this fast animation. I mean, there was a moment where they're going through the sleigh and they literally go slow motion and there's no fucking point to it. This mother needs to be super adamant that they have their breakfast. She needs to protest, shoves it 
goes and goes. It is constantly like that throughout the movie. Every single reaction the characters are supposed to have, you know, sort of aspect of misery and comedy, nobody reacts like they're really losing something. Nobody really reacts like they're fucking pissed off, especially the Grinch. And that is the big problem with this movie. It's not because Benedict Cumberbatch does not need to be in this movie. The comedy is so lifeless when in an environment it really needs to be. And it looks like we're gonna get more of them. Hopefully it tanks somehow. I would say watch the Chuck Jones one three times in a row. Get your popcorn, get your blanket. Get your cat. Bye. Do you want to be a reindeer?